Okay, let's start. Let me show you the detailed histology of blood. Let, let us cut over here and see under microscope. Okay, and what we see. The outermost layer is known as serosa. How oh, adventitious, serosa. This is serosa, thin peritoneal layer, followed by muscular layer, smooth muscle, also known as detrusor muscle. Okay, this is a muscular layer. Okay, and then the innermost layer is mucosa. Mucosa has still again two layer. If you remember, the smooth muscle layer is there, known as lamina propria, followed by epithelium. Epithelium is a transitional epithelium, which is multi-layered epithelium. Okay, multi-layered epithelium. Flat cancer involving the epithelial surface, entire epithelial surface. And this is known as carcinoma in situ. TIS. Okay. Carcinoma in situ. If a tumor arises from the epithelial surface and it is elevated upward, this is known as TA. TA means it's an epithelial cancer, cancer involving only epithelium, and it is projecting but not a flat tumor. Okay. TA. So <coughs> A tumor arising from the epithelial, epithelial cells uh, involving uh, just just went out of the epithelium, but is still within the mucosa. It is known as T1. Okay, T1. If a cancer cell arising from the epithelial surface, you know, and involve the muscular layer, and this is known as T2. If a cancer cell that arises from the epithelium and that in, start to involve the muscle and go out, just out of the bladder. T3, okay. Just outside the bladder, uh, there's a lot of fatty tissue known as perivesical fat. Perivesical fat, or fat around the bladder. But if the tumor arising from the epithelial surface go deeper and deeper, and now it started to involve the surrounding structure. I'll show you what is that. Surrounding structure. Like prostate in male or, or vagina in female or uterus or rectum in male. So surrounding structures, pelvic wall. In that case, in that case, <laughs> it is known as T4. TIS. T A and T1, these three are regarded as non-muscle invasive bladder cancer because they don't have they haven't involved the muscular layer. They're still within the mucosal layer. Okay. Whereas, whereas if the tumor start to involve the muscle and go beyond, okay, they all are known as muscle invasive bladder cancer because they have involved the muscle. And that's why, if you remember, that's why I've told you very specifically that whenever we dissect the bladder, bladder tumor, we also dissect the a slightly deeper muscles and we want to check the muscle involvement or not, okay? And that's why the most important finding histologically is whether it is a muscle invasive or not. Initially, the non-muscle invasive bladder cancer was known as superficial cancer, uh, but we don't say superficial now. We say non-muscle invasive bladder cancer. That means whenever whenever the lymph node has involved the pelvic lymph node, we say N, N plus or N1, N2, N3 like that. If no involvement, N0. If a bladder cancer has involved the uh, involved the other organ like lung, liver, bone, brain, then we say yes, it is M1. If not, then M0. That's it. See, flat tumors involving only epithelial surface, TIS. Uh, papillary tumor or, or, or elevated tumor involving only epithelial surface, TA. Tumor arising from epithelium involving the up to lamina, it is T1. Tumor arising from epithelium involving the muscular layer. Don't remember T2A, 2B, no, it's not for you. 
Just remember, if it involves the muscular layer, the only muscle layer, T2. If the tumor involves the muscle layer and come out and involves the surrounding fatty layer, T3. And if it starts to involve the surrounding organs like prostate or rectum in male and uh, <clears throat> vagina cervix in, in female or lateral pelvic wall, then it is T4. Grading um, means uh, how well differentiated the cancer cells are. That means if, if you do a resection and see under the microscope, whether these cells uh, resembles the normal cell or not, normal tissue or not. If, if it resembles, then we say well differentiated or low grade, not that aggressive. But if the entire tumor cell look very undifferentiated, you know, they, they are unable to differentiate whether, whether it's arising from the blood, blood or tissue or not, aggressive type, then we say high grade. All the muscle invasive cancers are high grade. T3, T2, T3, T4, whatever. Carcinoma and C2, even being a non-muscle invasive cancer, it is still high grade. Remember that. Number one, these are flat tumors, flat cancers involving the entire epithelium only, only epithelium number one. Number two, even it is non-muscle invasive bladder cancer, it is high grade, not low grade, it's very aggressive. Okay, and it can, it can cause a very you know, aggressive invasive bladder cancer. And the fourth one is, uh, to diagnose carcinoma and C2, we need help of blue light cystoscopy. So these are the information you should remember. See this question, please. These all three, carcinoma and C2, CIS or TS, same thing. These three are non-muscle invasive bladder cancer. T2 is muscle invasive bladder cancer. Very good. But let me ask you more difficult question, okay? Which of the following is and are high grade, high grade cancer? All the muscle invasive bladder cancer are high grade. Done. T2, T3, T3, T4, whatever you say. Okay. Among the non muscle invasive bladder cancer, carcinoma C2 is also in high grade. Whenever we plan for treatment, you should know whether it is muscle invasive bladder cancer or non muscle invasive bladder cancer. Okay. This is the, the first thing that we should know. And if it is if it is muscle invasive bladder cancer, then whether it's localized, that means just involving the bladder only. Locally advanced. Locally advanced means surrounding structures involved, like in the case of T3 or T4. This is T2. Or metastatic. And similarly, <clears throat> if it is non-muscle invasive, we should know which type, basically um, high grade or high risk type, the high risk varieties, like in the case of carcinoma and C2 are high risk varieties, T1 is high risk varieties, these have a higher chance of uh, getting early invasive cancer or, or low risk varieties, especially those T are usually, usually low risk. Okay. Then what are the treatment options that we have okay, for the bladder cancer. We have a basic surgery. Surgery also we have some different options like like we can do TURBT that is trans urethral section of bladder tumor. This is also a surgery. Here what we do is we remove the bladder tumor. Okay. We just remove the tumor with the base, that is with the muscular part. And then we just leave the bladder as it is, okay? This is what, what TURBT means. Obviously, uh, after TURBT, most of, most of the time, we add some other, other treatment as well. Second thing is radical cystectomy. Cystectomy with urinary diversion. But this is kidney.
visible order okay so <clears throat> when the tumor is uh, localized muscle invasive that is uh, tumor involving the muscle or even or even locally advanced cancers in both cases we can do radical cystectomy where we remove bladder with other organs i'll tell you in detail wait for that okay we remove bladder with lymph node with surrounding organs like prostate and so on so this is known as radical cystectomy once you do radical cystectomy what you have done is you have removed the bladder right so you have removed the bladder so blood is gone now what will you do about this ureter and kidney you have to divert this ureter and kidney such that the urinary flow will be diverted okay there's so many techniques to divert okay <clears throat> one of the very common technique is to divert by using piece of ileum this is known as ileal conduit i'll ex i'll explain later on okay so this is this is uh, open to the skin outside this is closed and the urine will go out into the bag so <clears throat> after after removing the bladder that is radical cystectomy that is we have divert the urinary flow that's why whenever we do radical cystectomy we have to do urinary diversion okay so this is ideal for for muscle invasive bladder cancer mainly localized muscle invasive bladder cancer we can also try for locally advanced disease okay sometime in the case of metastatic disease <clears throat> when we were not able to control bleeding from the bladder that time we can do palliative cystectomy palliative cystectomy to me that is we can remove only bladder to control the bleeding what else we can do we can give intravesical therapy this is new for you okay this is applicable for non muscle invasive bladder cancer after section if if the report biopsy report come as like non muscle invasive bladder cancer it could be any a type like it could be custom and c2 it could be t1 whatever then we can give this intervesical therapy we have removed the bladder cancer not the bladder bladder is still there and you know the bladder has remaining mucosa as well so there is a higher chance of developing recurrence of bladder cancer so in that case what we do is after a section after a section and and confirmed about the about the variety of or type of bladder cancer we add chemotherapy or immunotherapy immunotherapy inside the bladder and one of the most common chemotherapy that we use inside the bladder is mitomycin c mitomycin c and the most common uh, uh, immunotherapy that we use is bcg the same bcg vaccine that we use for uh, tuberculosis systemic chemotherapy okay and in systemic chemotherapy basically we we use cisplatin cisplatin is the main drug okay and we use cisplatin in, in various combinations the most common combination is known as amvac amvac is a combination of of a drug containing cisplatin so this uh, systemic chemotherapy is used sometime before surgery uh, as a new adjuvant therapy or maybe used after surgery to control the spread or sometime it is also used as a therapy for metastatic disease so chemotherapy has a huge role in treatment of bladder cancer radiotherapy Radiotherapy is basically given in the case of metastatic bladder cancer. When there is a metastatic metastatic to the brain and bone, we give radiotherapy to that area. Okay, and obviously, in the case of metastasis, we always give palliative care. These all are the treatment options that we have for <coughs> bladder cancer. Now, now depending on the stage, now we will decide what to do. Okay, let's see. fine now let us see this is trbt i will explain you have seen the video right so <laughs> what we do is we dissect the tumor uh, plus plus base of base of the tumor 
and this is what a radical cystectomy means. We remove the entire bladder with surrounding structures and do urinary diversion. Okay, I'll explain in detail weight. So the treatment depends on obviously staging. So either it is a non-muscle invasive bladder cancer or muscle invasive bladder cancer. Suppose a male or female came to you with a feature of bladder cancer that is painless hemorrhage, and you did you did investigations, especially suppose ultrasonogram of abdomen or pelvis, or you did CT scan of abdomen and pelvis, and you found you found that the patient has a bladder tumor. Now the first step that we do is we do T U R B T. That is, we do a resection, resection, and send that specimen to the lab. Whenever we, we do resection, within six hours of resection, we have to add one dose of mitomycin C. So <clears throat> this is an anti-cancer drug <clears throat> that we put inside the bladder. Okay, we put there for two hours. After three, four days, when the patient will come to you, then you, you should check the, the biopsy report. If it says uh, it is just in costume and C2, then the, the you have to add intravesical BCG. So <clears throat> if the report comes as TA, TA are usually low-grade, low low-risk cancers, then in, the, in that case, uh, do nothing. That is, just the TURBT is enough. That TURBT is enough, you don't have to add any other medicine. Okay? And if the, the report come as T high risk or T1 disease, T1 disease, then intravesical therapy, that is BCG or mitomycin C should be added. Ideally, BCG should be added. Sometimes, sometimes some surgeons think the T1 disease is more aggressive. That is, before reaching to the T2, why not to remove the bladder? That is radical cystectomy. Some surgeons think that way also, but mostly we go for intravesical BCG mainly, sometimes mitomycin. So see, whatever treatment you do give to this non-muscle invasive bladder cancer, after the treatment, you have to continue follow-up. Because during follow-up, we all, always check for recurrence of cancer. If there is recurrence, then we follow the protocol for recurrence. Either we go for radical cystectomy or we can change the medicine from mitomycin C to BCG, depending on the situation. Once you do a TURBT and find the biopsy report, depending on that, CIS, straightforward plan for BCG installation inside the bladder, intracycle BCG. TA, usually they are low risk. You do nothing, don't add any medication, just go for um, uh, follow-up, okay? And in T1 disease or high-risk TA, uh, add intravesical BCG. You can use mitomycin C, but BCG is better. So we do follow-up, we do follow-up, and during follow-up, we do cystoscopy, we do, you know, uh, cytology test, we do a lot of investigations, uh, such that we always check for any, any recurrence or not. Let me explain something about intravesical therapy. These therapies is actually for non-muscle invasive bladder cancer. So once the report comes as non-muscle invasive bladder cancer, so you have already done TURBT. Without TURBT, you, you, you don't know whether it is a muscle invasive or not. After that, you have to add this therapy, inter, intervesical therapy, okay? Intervesical means therapy inside the bladder. So we have, we have basically two options. One is chemotherapy, intervesical chemotherapy, Commonly given therapy is mitomycin C. Mitomycin C. You can give other chemotherapy agents like zemcitabine, okay, thiotepa. There are other drugs as well. We can use intervesical, but most commonly used as a mitomycin C. These are usually given for low risk, low risk disease, low risk non-muscle invasive bladder cancer. That are actually this is usually TA. Okay, immuno immunotherapy. But these drugs enhance our immune system, and that immune system will kill the cancer cell. So, in in the case of chemotherapy, they are directly toxic. They just are, are toxic to the cancer cell. The immunotherapy, basically, we have BCG and interferon. Most commonly used is BCG, the same BCG. Okay, that that is used a vaccine that is used to vaccinate against the tuberculosis how how, how we how we give that <coughs> so
we will take a vaccine, one ml of vaccine, which is around two ml, and mix that vaccine with 40 ml of <coughs> of a normal saline. Okay, and then we catheter the patient. Okay, we put a catheter, and through the catheter, we 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 push the uh, that 40 ml of of diluted vaccine inside the bladder, and then we ask the patient to change the position every 15 minute. Supine, right lateral, left lateral, prone, just change. So that that drug will will act over the entire urinary blood. They will do that for two hours, okay, continuously. After that, they will go to washroom and they will mixture it. And these um, instrument that we have used to uh, install the medications, everything has to be disposed properly, okay. <clears throat> Similarly, mitomycin C is also given the same way. We take a four vial of mitomycin C mixed with the with 10 ml of normal saline, 40 ml, we make it 40 ml and put it inside the blood or through catheter. And the patient will do the same thing, okay? Rotate around, left lateral, right lateral, and, and so on. And then there's a protocol of giving these drugs, okay? Mitomycin C has a separate protocol, BCG has a separate protocol, how much to give, how frequently to give, okay? There are some protocols you have to follow. And whatever protocol you follow, always we do a follow up check, cystoscopy, cytology, we always do that. So, I have told you mitomycin C works by, by acting as an anti-cancer drug. What about BCG? BCG is an immunomodulator. That means it actually enhances our, our, our immune system, mainly T cells, T cell immunity. Okay? That means when we put a BCG inside the bladder, it, it causes uh, activation of uh, local immunity in that bladder it activates the t cells in that bladder region and once the t cell is activated uh, that can not only um, destroy bacteria but also can kill the cancer cells so using using uh, uh, these intravesical therapies uh, decrease the chance of recurrence of bladder cancer but still there is a chance that's why we have to do a follow up regularly to check for the recurrence after doing a TRBT within 6 hours we have to put mitomycin C inside, okay? And then once the report comes as a muscle invasive bladder cancer, now identify the involvement of surrounding structures. If you haven't done CT scan, then do CT scan abdomen and, and then check all the, all everything about the metastasis now, such that you, you identify that this muscle invasive bladder cancer is either just locally muscle invasive, localized, or the bladder cancer was there, but you have found uh, the tumor has involved the surrounding structures, teeth, um, fat or other structures like prostate, T3 or T4, this is T2. Or the bladder cancer was there with involvement of lung or liver or bone or brain like that. So you have to differentiate these muscle invasive bladder cancer, whether it's localized, locally advanced, or metastatic. This is a muscle invasive bladder cancer, and there is no local local advancement, no metastasis, only localized within the bladder T2. Then the best treatment is remove the entire bladder along with surrounding structures, and then do urinary diversion. That is known as radical cystectomy, followed by urinary diversion. We always do both surgeries. First, we remove the bladder. Then we do additional surgery to divert the urine. And if it's locally advanced, either it's just involving the fat of the bladder, T3, or involving the surrounding structures like prostate or vagina or, or cervix in female. Okay. In that case, either you can, uh, especially in T4, we uh, give new adjuvant chemotherapy that is we give an iv systemic chemotherapy before surgery that is mvac is more common and then after giving a chemotherapy we do radical cystectomy and urinary diversion or if it is t3 disease then we first do radical cystectomy and urinary diversion immediately followed by that is adjuvant chemotherapy patient has a muscle massive bladder cancer and the metastatic evaluation shows us there was a metastasis to lung, liver, bone, or brain. Okay, any one of the organ was involved. Then we have to straight start with systemic chemotherapy. 
uh, either of any combinations most commonly used is MVAC containing cisplatin followed by palliative care like analgesics emotional support and then you know if there's a involvement of bone or brain give local radiotherapy to bone or brain and if if even after giving these systemic chemotherapy radiotherapy still uh, there's a bleeding then we have to do cystectomy here we don't go for a radical cystectomy we just go for a simple cystectomy okay we just remove the bladder only not other organs just to control the bleeding so this is <laughs> this is how we treat a patient of a bladder cancer in a different ways okay whatever treatment you do follow-up is the key in any surgery related to oncology or cancer we have to follow the follow-up after after the surgery and the different cancer has different follow-up protocols but in generally in generally what we say is every three months for first two years and every six months for next three years and doing follow-up we check we ask about the symptoms, new onset of symptoms, old symptoms. We do investigations like in the case of bladder cancer, we do cytology, we, we do CT scan of abdomen. See this MCQ. See this question, you should understand. What is PTA? TA means it is a non-muscle invasive bladder cancer, right? It is non-muscle invasive bladder cancer, okay? So radical cystectomy is out of question. Partial cystectomy is out of question. So this two we don't do as it is a non-muscle invasive bladder cancer. So answer would be like, either I should go for a resection or I should go for a resection with interphysical therapy, right? This session we always do. After a section one, you understood it is a non-muscle invasive bladder cancer. So as the PTA, as there's a PTA, PTA is also low and high grade, not, not written over here. So I already told you, whenever there's a PTA, TA variety, we usually go for a mitomycin C. That's why there should be intervesical therapy. This is the answer, okay? Superficial cancer, we don't use this term nowadays, but still in some, some questions you may find, superficial means non-muscle invasive bladder cancer, okay? low grade right low grade so now now the systemic chemotherapy we don't give systemic chemotherapy is given in muscle invasive cancers okay radical cystectomy we don't do because it is not a muscle invasive bladder cancer so we have two options uh, excision and the recycle bcg i already told you bcg is for high grade So as the question was specifically asking you low grade, answer is local excision means it is TURBT. Now in low grade cancers, actually, uh, either we go for a mitomycin C or we just dissect the tumor and the stay. So dissection is, is the answer here. False, false statement, right? See, yes, urothelial cancer means TCC bladder is strongly associated with smoking and cystosomiasis, no doubt. Radical cystectomy followed by chemotherapy is for muscle invasive. Yes, we do radical cystectomy and adjuvant chemotherapy for muscle invasive. This is also correct. Okay. Uh, whenever you do a cystectomy, you have to do any form of diversion. Any form. Ideal conduit is one of the form of diversion. This is also correct. The only statement that is wrong is this one. Intravesical chemotherapy and immunotherapy are not found to be beneficial. No, this is wrong. It is, it is, it is beneficial. That's why we give intravesical chemotherapy and immunotherapy in the case of non-muscle invasive bladder cancer. So the question was asking which one is wrong. Wrong one is B. Mitomycin C, adriamycin, thiotepa, BCG, all are used for uh, um, chemotherapy agent. Okay. Mitomycin C is usually given for super, uh, for low grade or low risk uh, cancer, non low risk non muscle invasive bladder cancer. Where BC is given for high risk, high risk non muscle invasive bladder cancer. Okay, so <clears throat> so why we give BC in why we give BC in high risk because they are very effective. That's why we give in high risk patient. That's why BCG is more effective 
very effective against the bladder cancer. Now let us discuss you know, some something about uh, operative surgeries. Those surgical uh, you know options that we have. One of the very common surgical uh, treatment that we always do. Okay, this is always done. That is T U R B T. Um, if you suspect a person has a bladder tumor, to know the exact uh, pathological type, staging, everything, you must do TURBT. So what we do in TURBT is, we have seen in the picture that, see here, that we not only remove the tumor that we see, but also we remove the base from the tumor. Uh, TURBT not only acts as a part of biopsy, but also sometimes it, it acts as treatment. As you have seen in the case of uh, low risk non muscle invasive bladder cancer, just TURBT is enough. So, as I've already told you, after TURBT, we always, we, we always uh, put a single dose of mitomycin C inside the bladder. If you remember that uh, video that I have shown you, uh, in that case, uh, you know, uh, we have used some fluid. Without irrigating fluid, we cannot do the surgical step. Right. So to reset or to cut the tumor, uh, we use two types of current. One known as monopolar current, other known as bipolar current. Okay. <laughs> Mostly we use monopolar current. And whenever you use monopolar current, we always have to use glycine, 1.5% 1, 1. glycine for irrigation. Because in monopolar current, uh, if, if you use normal saline, then the current will disperse and it will not cut. So normally we use monopolar current to cut the tumor. And when we, you, you use monopolar current, we always use 1.5% glycine as an irrigant. So when you, when you, whenever you do a resection, obviously there will be bleeding. If you, if you have remembered that, that video, that there was bleeding. And what we did is we, we have coagulated the uh, bleeding site by using the current. And during process, if, if, if you remove deeper, you know, what do you say, like a layer, then there's a chance of perforation. So bleeding and perforation are, perforation are the common complications, most commonly bleeding. That's why uh, we always coagulate the margin of resection and always at the end, we put tri-channel catheter uh, to prevent clotting if there's a bleeding. So radical cystectomy means, suppose this is male system, prostate is there, rectum is behind, okay, and there are Pelvic lymph nodes there, right? Pelvic lymph nodes, so ureter, and perivesical fatty layer, fat around the bladder. Okay, so <clears throat> whenever we do a radical cystectomy, so but there's a muscle invasive bladder cancer, right? T2, T3, or T4, mainly T2. That is uh, just involving muscles. In that case, we, we are planning to remove the bladder, right? Okay. Including prostate in male, including surrounding fat and pelvic lymph node. You remove the bladder, okay? Plus surrounding fat, plus prostate. As I, when I'm talking about male, prostate, pelvic lymph node. This much has to be removed. What about female then? In female, in female, also we this is. Pelvic lymph nodes, fat around the bladder is there. Okay, so here also we remove urinary bladder, okay, including uterus, cervix, anterior wall of vagina, some part, urethra, and pelvic lymph nodes. All these things are removed. Okay, so <laughs> radical cystectomy is actually. Uh, in female is more extensive than male. So sometimes sometime the radical cystectomy in female is known as anterior exenteration. 
that means we are removing the entire uh, uh, pelvic organ in the anterior part just leaving the rectum okay so <laughs> please remember these uh, these terms and the structure what we remove <clears throat> now when you do remove the urinary bladder uh, then you must think about what now we are going to do about the ureter so whenever you do a radical cystectomy that is you have removed the bladder then think about these ureter because you have we have already we have already removed the bladder right there is no bladder there so there is just a ureter remaining in male or female and ureter are there and the kidney will produce urine continuously okay so to produce so this urine has to be diverted somewhere diversion depends on on like various factors but there are some common diversion technique that we do so this is abdomen what we can do here is the the ureter can be diverted directly into the skin of abdomen both sided we can do that separately or you can do or you can do one side same side same place so this is known as this is known as cutaneous means skin uretero means ureter is stomach means mouth open the ureter to the skin and and what we do we put a bag here so why the second option is better than first option because we we just have to the patient just have to take care of only one bag uh, in the first uh, option the patient has to take care of two bags in the abdomen okay. this is known as cutaneous ureterostomy this is one option and and the option is suppose this is kidney this is ureter okay what you can do here is this is ascending colon ileum so what we do here is we just don't do anything in this 15 to 20 cm here we just preserve that because terminal ileum is a, is a site for absorption of a vitamin b12 and other so many other things so after that what we do take is this around 15 to 20 centimeter around 15 centimeter of of ileum is resected and obviously uh, we don't disturb the blood supply of this segment we will keep it intact and then we will uh, just join the remaining part here just we we'll stretch it here and join it over here the ileum will be continuous and this resected segment we we bring and one one opening is made at skin other opening is blocked stitch it we stitch it other opening and this ureter will open inside this segment this is known as ileal conduit ileal conduit we can use jejunal conduit we can use any other conduit but the best conduit is ileal, ileal segment it, is, it has some advantage number one see the ureter is not connected to skin and whenever the ureter is connected to skin there's chance of uti but here the segment a separate segment of intestine is there and urine will be collected in this segment for a while and this is connected to the blood uh, to the bag so here you can see that the urine will stay in the segment for a while and uh, that will be emptied into the bag so and compared to the first option second option has more control over the urinary flow and less chance of uh, uti that's why this is very very common procedure very common can we do this thing suppose this is kidney ureter this is ureter after cystectomy can we put this segment directly into sigmoid colon 
such that the urine will go directly into the, in, in the sigmoid colon and then come out through the anal orifice. That means the ureter is <coughs> directly connected to the sigmoid colon. It looks very promising, right? Because there is nothing in, in the abdomen. The patient don't have to uh, carry the bag. Here, the problem is as this, this, this sigmoid colon has a lot of bacteria, there's a chance of UTI. So UTI is very, very high. That's why we don't do the, these process now. There's that much. The other option is known as new bladder. That is new bladder. <laughs> this is ileum. So we don't disturb this 15 to 20 centimeter as usual. So we, we remove this segment around, around 50 to 60 centimeter segment. As we have to make a new bladder, we need a, a larger segment. And then we, we stitch the remaining, uh, the remaining ileum. Then this segment will have blood vessels intact. From this segment, what we do here is we'll make new bladder, new urinary bladder. Okay. And this is connected to the urethra, which is already present there, connected. We put a limb, long efferent limb, as it's made of intestine, we can do that. <clears throat> and we stitch over here. Why you do that? Because that's it to prevent reflux. We make this limb like thing. Okay. And now the urine that is produced by the kidney will flow and collect it to the bladder. This is not a bladder, right? This is intestine. The contraction is not that much good. So initially the patient has to do self catheter, self catheter. And, and empty the bladder, but slowly and slowly they, just, they start gaining that contraction and then everything is fine. This looks very promising, right? Because see what happened here is, one is a, this <coughs> new bladder is kept exactly at the previous bladder site. That's why we use the term orthotopic. Orthotopic. Orthotopic means putting exactly at the same site of previous bladder. And it is a new bladder. So we say new bladder. So the term that we use is orthotopic neobladder. A new bladder is formed by, by intest small intestine and kept exactly at the pelvis at the place of a bladder, previous bladder. If a patient fulfills the criteria, then we always do uh, orthotopic neobladder because this is very good for a patient. They, they don't have to hang the bag, right? As long as, as long as it is possible, we always do orthotopic neobladder. But sometimes it is not possible due to some reasons, due to some, the criteria are not fulfilled. In that case, we have to go for ileal conduit or cutaneous ureterostomy. These three are more common. External diversion means when the urine is diverted externally out of the body. Internal diversion means we don't have to use bag. In that case, either we put a ureter directly into sigmoid colon, not used nowadays, but most commonly that we, we do is we make a new bladder. Okay, that is orthotopic new bladder. A 59 years old, a 59 years old male uh, with uh, with the history of red color urine. Okay, no pain, no fever. That means I'm talking about painless, pain, painless hematuria. And yes, smoking like one packet per day per year for 30 years. No other symptoms. Vitals are okay. Now, whenever you get a, a patient with just clean cut painless hematuria is around 60 65 with the history of smoking first thing about bladder cancer it could be it could be kidney cancer rcc or it could be a urinary uh, tumor now we start with urine cytology at least right so urine cytology here it was found to be negative cytology negative does not mean patient don't have cancer right so immediately we, we can do ultrasonogram of abdomen and pelvis in this case, what you have found is you have found a mass, mixed echogenic mass is arising from the left lateral wall of the bladder. So you are sure this patient has a bladder tumor. Now, next, what to do? You can just go for a TURBT, a cystoscopy and biopsy, or you can go for a CT scan.
CT scan will give an additional information. Here you can see uh, there's a filling defect is found and, and there was no other abnormality, okay? No lymph node involved, the tumor is inside the bladder, not outside the bladder, and the liver is... Next step that what we want to do is, we have to, we have to do cystoscopy and biopsy. So let's, let us see what we have found. We have found the huge bladder tumor, and it was a high-grade bladder tumor, TCC bladder tumor, TA, high-grade, non-muscle invasive bladder cancer, but high-grade. If you see the term high grade, always go for metastatic evaluation. And for, for this case, it was, it was found to be normal. My diagnosis is non-muscle invasive bladder cancer, TA high grade. Okay. Now, what next you will do? As it is in high grade tumor, but non-muscle invasive, we have already done TURBT. Now, the next step is intravesical BC therapy is your step. And follow up <clears throat> similar case 59 years old male uh, red color urine hematuria paleness cigarette smoking she was there no cough no jaundice nothing was there again the differential will be same bladder tumor renal tumor you are taking similar findings similar findings and now the most important step that you have to is you have to do cystoscopy and biopsy cystoscopy and, cystoscopy and biopsy uh, is showing you high grade TCC involving muscle. That means it is muscle invasive bladder cancer. Done. Once you once you know it is a muscle invasive, the next thing you have to know is whether it is a metastatic or not, whether it has involved the surrounding structure or not. So metastatic evaluation shows that it was normal, no metastasis, no involvement to surrounding structures. So it is clean cut muscle invasive bladder cancer that is localized. Localized means T2. We know that. Okay, once we know that, then the planning is very easy. The planning, the, the best treatment for this patient is, is radical cystectomy with urinary diversion. These are the questions for you guys. Okay.